I've had the idea for a while to make an illustration of a hall of dinosaur fossils in a museum, something that captures that feeling of wonder. So I'm going to try to document my illustration process from start to finish. This was my first time trying to film the process of making digital art, and the illustration itself did not go smoothly, and I almost abandoned the project at, at, at a few different points. So just a heads up. This is the first really rough thumbnail I do. Sigh. This is the first really rough thumbnail I drew just to get it on paper. I'm going to try to redraw it a little bit more legibly. I'm a big fan of drawing thumbnails. I found that if I skip doing this stage, it'll just make the drawing and drafting process much more difficult in the long run. I figure if the composition is readable and effective at one inch tall, that'll translate to the full size picture. I decided to change the layout to horizontal. I realized that I had drawn the T-Rex the old-fashioned way, and I want to make sure that I do justice to Sue, because she's just so beautiful. I always like to start off an illustration project with research, not just to help find references for the lighting or mood or aesthetic that I want to draw. Also so that I have the information to depict things reasonably accurately if the illustration calls for it. And that metric totally varies from project to project. But I want to make these dinosaur fossils look sort of accurate and to have those really knobbly skeleton shapes. So I pulled up some images on Google and copied them down really quickly. I feel like this helps my hand get used to drawing specific shapes so that when I go to do the actual sketch, I can focus on the composition and the flow and stylization. And then because I thought it would be helpful, I got really distracted watching size comparison renderings of different dinosaurs and then of prehistoric creatures in general, because it's just so wild to think about. Like, excuse me, what the heck is this? Oh, and this is a sketch of a dead mole that I saw on a walking trail. It was really sad and really cute. Rest in peace, Molly. I like to begin a pencil sketch by taking an actual photo of my, like, stupid tiny thumbnail, and then enlarging that photo until it's super grainy, and I use this as a guide for the composition and as a way not to get too bogged down with details right at the beginning of the sketch. I'm calling this stage the pencil sketch, even though my pencil lines are actually pencil lies, and in fact just a bunch of pixels. But for a drawing like this, I think doing the sketch digitally works a lot better, because it's so much easier to move parts of the sketch around, and figure out your composition, and fudge the perspective, and things like that. I decided to make the dino fossil positioned so that it's like the fossil and the girl character are looking at each other. This is one of my favorite ways to make an illustration more engaging, is to have the characters looking at each other or looking at something in particular. I think I heard one time that when we look at a piece of art or at a picture, our eyeline naturally tracks whatever the subject's eyeline is looking at. So you can kind of direct your viewers' eyelines around your picture that way. And I thought I had finished the sketch at this point, but I looked at it the following day and I wasn't happy with the position of the T-Rex, and I was having a lot of trouble with the body. <laughs> so I found this reference image and used it as a guide. I literally just put it at a low opacity and then built my drawing on top of that. Because T-Rexes are pretty meaty, and I was having a lot of trouble with the foreshortening without any meat to put on the bones. Well, I'm a lot better at drawing. I'm a lot better at drawing like chunky animals. <laughs> I took out the little pedestals and decided that they're just going to kind of magically be standing directly on the floor, because I can. And I think I'm finally good with that sketch, so now it's time to move over to the computer for the digital art. Real quick, this is my digital art setup with my Cintiq in front, 
which is where I'll be screen recording from. And right here is my monitor where I can pull up my reference images. And I have my keyboard over here with some bump dots added to certain hotkeys so that I can press them with my nub. And my first step once I get into Photoshop is to choose my color palette. I like to do that by gathering a bunch of color ideas from this website. Let's type in a keyword and see what we get. Okay. Okay. God damn. So once I've gathered a pool of colors that I generally like, I'll do a blobby little color sketch. And this just makes the digital painting process so much easier because after I've roughly figured out the colors for the foreground, background, middle ground, then I can just go in and eyedropper from that. And I paint bucketed the background with this purple that I'll be using so that my eyeballs won't be fried from looking at the stark white background. And since it's a mid-tone, it helps establish where the brightest and the darkest colors will go in the painting. I painted the background using this soft brush, which gives it a blurry look like it's out of focus. And that helps add some depth of field and the illusion of a big open space. I also like to keep a blank page open to test out different brushes. I drew the different sections of the skeleton in layers so that I can just quickly turn alpha lock on and then adjust their colors. And I don't really blend colors when I paint in Photoshop. I don't think I've ever touched the mixer brush and quite frankly, it intimidates me. So instead of mixing, I just use different brush textures and vary the flow and opacity to get like color and shading. And I was, again, I was not into the dinosaur or the arches which I liked on the sketch, but I was very unimpressed with here. So I changed them into pillars and added some other background stuff to set the scene, as well as some ornamentation to give it that stuffy classical museum look. I painted some people in the background using a very soft brush so that I can keep them non-detailed on purpose. For some finishing touches, I added a layer mask to this highlight so that it would look a little more natural and not have such hard edges. 
And then I duplicated the rim lighting highlight that I used for the bones. And then with this duplicate layer, I added a Gaussian blur and then set the blending layer to overlay, I want to say, to give it a glow effect and make it look like the light was really bouncing off of the bones. So in conclusion, I, I do go through each of these steps for pretty much every digital illustration I do. Definitely not always this in depth. Like sometimes the research and the practice drawings only take a few minutes total. And just a reminder, the decisions I made here or the advice that I gave in this video is not like the right way to do any of these steps. They were just the steps that made sense for the illustration that I was trying to make. I try to remember artwork is subjective, so just do what makes your artwork effective. Thank you so much for watching, and if this tutorial has been at all helpful or interesting, please let me know in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to have more explanation of. Do you want less talking? Do you want more music? <laughs> I'll do whatever. <laughs> but thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.